everybody, welcome back to Trial and Error. And uh, as you see, managed to slide five of these giant ass 2,000 pound batteries here. I was actually a little bit worried about the floor. Uh, so we got you know, a total of 10,000 pounds. So I, I did pre-drill the floor just to make sure we had you know, six inches or so of concrete, which we do, and it's, uh, it's holding up fine. So, but that, that's a lot of weight and a, a whole lot of storage capacity here. Um, so those are in place. Now I built the wall here. Obviously we have a lot of equipment that has to get mounted and wired all up. So I thought this worked out really nice because that gives me now a closet under the stairwell here where my compressor is and it'll help keep the noise down. But we have a lot of wiring to do. And uh, to be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about the next few steps here. So we'll kind of be learning this and figuring it out as I go. Um, but the first step I guess is gonna be pulling apart all of the cabinets that were mounted to those trailers with all the electronics in them. So let's take a look at those. So I put all of them here. Uh, these guys are on wheels. They're really, really heavy. Uh, we, mainly when you have the inverters in them because each inverter is uh, 150 pounds. So it, it adds up pretty quick. Uh, but we'll take a closer look here at one of these uh, mid disassembly just to give you an idea of what we need to do. Okay, so with the, with the obvious inverters out of here, um, what we're basically left with is this is your PV panel. So this handles all of the uh, line voltage coming off the panels and protects them with a breaker. And it also protects them with, uh, with an arc protecting type of breaker. I'm not sure what you would actually call that to be honest, but um, so each one of those circuits has one of those. Uh, then it's distributed into this midnight. Uh, this is the solar charge controller. So the inverters are also able to charge, but they handle the generating, uh, the generator backup side of charging and they let this do the solar sides of charging. Uh, below that we have a panel for what was the lighting system that were on the trailer, so we're not gonna need that at all. And to the left here is all the 110, 120 volt uh, post inverter circuitry. And again, we're not gonna need uh, really anything there. And uh, yeah. That's it, so it's just a lot of work here, uh, disconnecting things. I'm gonna try to save this as a package, whereas it's already connected and wired. If I, because I, I need both, if I can just remove that as a set, um, that's gonna make uh, one less thing to have to assemble uh, over on our wall here, but we'll see how that goes. All right, I changed my mind. This is a friggin' free country, well, at least today, uh, still, so I can do that. I decided I'm gonna start at the bottom here and we're gonna work our way up. Uh, so that way I can get this all wrapped up and done. I can stand on these guys to do uh, the wiring up on the wall itself. I think that'll make more sense. So with each one of these has a set of uh, two watt monster cables uh, coming out of it. All of those are gonna need to be joined together uh, along with, let's see, we have four solar chargers. So there's gonna be four probably eight gauge cables coming from those. So now we're up to eight per side. Uh, and then our inverters, which we're probably gonna have six inverters. Uh, they're gonna have their own four out cables to feed those. Uh, so there's, uh, what did I say, six? Yeah, so there's another 12 feeds there. So bottom line, all of this stuff has to come together in a very robust way because when our house is like fully rocking with air conditioning, three systems, air, three air conditioning systems going, uh, I'm sure my wife will decide to do the laundry at that point uh, while the pool pump is running as well. That's a lot of current that's going to be pouring out of this system. So I needed something that's going to handle that without, you know, even getting warm because I want the efficiency as well. It's not just about safety, but uh, the bigger you can beef that stuff up in those little connections, um, the less loss there is just parasitic loss in by generating heat. So here's what I did. So my first thought was to go online and order some bus bars and then I saw the price of those and said we're not going to do that. So I ordered some raw copper, um, big thick uh, quarter inch, three eighths inch uh, copper bars. So these are going to end up being our bus bars and uh, they're just a drill press away from becoming a bus bar. Uh, relatively inexpensive when you buy it raw like that, um, but for whatever reason it gets very expensive when it's a bus bar. So I got some standoffs here, these will stand stand the copper bar off of our wall. And uh, yeah, we'll tie everything into a positive and a negative bus bar that we will, uh, that we're gonna make. I ordered a whole bunch of monster crimp ends, a whole bunch of monster crimp ends. Uh, and the good news is, is the project I just did in the house, uh, putting that cable in, the cable wiring, um, 
wire cable hand railing for the stairs. Uh, the hydraulic crimper that I had to buy in order to make that actually works for these too, which is really good. That'll uh, make sure we get a good connection there. So we're gonna start by uh, getting our 48 volts up to somewhere here that we can work with. Uh, I am not gonna mount it directly to the wood. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure why it, it would be fine, but uh, just to be safe, I am gonna put an insulating layer between it. So I've got some fiberglass panels with aluminum uh, on the front and on the back uh, that will help kind of isolate any heat if there was any from the uh, wood itself. And then we've got temperature monitors for each of these each one of these batteries so there's a lot of like communication stuff um, that needs to get fed as well so uh, i think i'm gonna do all that first and uh, see how this goes <laughs> As you can see, now all 600 pounds of them are mounted to the wall. And uh, I've gone and run the DC, uh, 48 volt DC cable leads in. I didn't bother showing you that, although I still have one left to do up here. I figure you guys can figure out how to run a red and a black cable into a plus and a minus. But we're now ready to get into the AC side, the output side of these inverters and tying them together into what will become uh, my own little power grid here. So what we're doing is uh, all four of these, well, there's gonna be one master, which is this guy, and that master is going to control inverter slave number one, inverter slave number two, and inverter slave number three. And we're gonna set this up so that two of these are uh, feeding one leg of my 240 volt service, and then these two are gonna feed the other leg of the 240 volt service. So that means all of the neutrals get tied together. So all four neutrals will end up coming together into a box. Uh, I'm going to take the hut from in uh, master and the first, actually I lied. It's hut from the master and then number three, uh, which is the slave number two. And then we will take the slave number one and slave number four, uh, three. <laughs> and that will become the other leg. And the reason for that is because we're working on 60 Hertz and it's going in a clockwise direction. You wanna make sure that your frequencies are tied together uh, so that these two aren't fighting each other. And in order for that to happen, the way you need to wire these is in that bit of an odd series, uh, but that's how it's set up to work. 
so there's a few different ways we could have done this. I could have made these like my house version or you know, to power the house stuff and then made this one to power the garage and kind of separate the load that way. Um, but I like putting them together. I think that makes way more sense. Uh, it spreads the load over her face. No, it spreads the load uh, <laughs> all over the, uh, uh, all over the four of them uh, much more equally and should uh, you know just be much more stable in terms of voltage across it. So I think uh, I got to figure out if I can reuse one of the breakers that came with the trailers just to save a few bucks, one of the panels. Um, but essentially this is putting out at full tilt can uh, constantly can put out up to 200 amps of household current. That's a ton of friggin' power, which is great because that happens to be what I have on my main panel. The house is a 200 amp service that we upgraded a couple of years ago. Um, so with that said, that's a lot of current. So everything has to be able to handle that 200 amps, but we're going to put it in a panel here that gives us that 200 amp output. From there, we're going to feed this garage sub panel, and then I'm going to have to run some real heavy, probably uh, four gauge aluminum, the same stuff that you'd have running off the street. I have to upgrade the service between the garage and the house so that we can provide, obviously, uh, up to 200 amps of current back to the house. Not that it'll ever draw quite that much, although we do draw a lot of, I got a lot of electronic crap in this house. So uh, yeah, we need a good power center. So uh, that's kind of where we're at. So I'm gonna start getting that wired up next and try to make it so that when we turn it on, nothing catches on fire. In our next video, we will dig into this AC distribution side of uh, things and you can kind of see the panel I elected to go with there, but we'll get all of that stuff wired up and uh, what else? PV, we'll probably do the PV side, uh, at least start getting the feeds going up to the roof from each one of those uh, PV chargers and start to get this thing kind of producing some current. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching and have a great day.